My name is Anke Hoffmann Panther. I'm working in the selection department of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, and I'm in charge of the International Climate Protection Fellowship Program. I think most of you have already heard um, about the Humboldt Foundation, so I'm just going to say um, a few words about what we are doing. We are a German funding organization based in Bonn Bad Godesberg. And um, above all, we are supporting academic cooperation between excellent German and foreign scientists, mostly by granting research fellowships and research awards to research, researchers and young talents from abroad to come to Germany and to conduct uh, research here in Germany. And um, when you become part of um, the Humboldt family of our network, then by being funded by us, then you become part of a steadily growing international network. We have currently um, more than 30,000 alumni in our network, and you will be able to meet um, peers of your, res your research area, your work area, but you will also be able um, to meet in this network rising stars and international top scientists, because we also have um, programs for um, research leaders in their field. So um, these are the award programs. And what is also special about the Humboldt Foundation is that once um, you are funded by the Humboldt Foundation, you can benefit from our um, sponsorship for whole your academic life, which means that we also offer a broad range of alumni um, sponsorship opportunities. And that's why we live up to the motto, once a Humboldtian, always a Humboldtian. Humboldtians are the alumni of the Humboldt Foundation. So now I'm going um, a bit more in detail about the International Climate Protection Fellowship Program. Professor Bonn has already told you um, a lot about how to find a host and what is important about the program. Um, so um, I would like to start sharing with you some general information. It's a program um, with two program lines, meaning that um, you can apply um, if you um, are a prospective leader or if you are a postdoctoral um, student and you need to be from a non-European emerging or developing country. We have a list of countries eligible for the program of, of, um, on our website as well. Um, those who apply in this program are working in the area of climate protection or resource conservation. And here's one um, point that was already asked before. It's not important in which area you're, you're working. You can come from social sciences, from natural sciences, from engineering, as long as you're working in the field of climate protection or resource conservation, you are eligible for this program. And those who are applying in the International Climate Protection Fellowship Program are working in different areas. They um, can, they work in academia, they work for NGOs or public administrations in their countries. But for example, we also had candidates um, working in um, the arts sector or in journalism. So that's also, um, that are also areas interesting for the, this program. And um, when you are sponsored um, within this program, you will be able to conduct um, a project of your choice in Germany with a German collaboration partner. Per year, we can grant up to 20 fellowships. We have 15 fellowships for prospective leaders and five fellowships for postdocs. What are the general application requirements for both program lines? Um, these are the general application requirements. Um, you need to have a first university degree. Usually it's a, a bachelor's degree, which has been completed less than 12 years ago by um, the time of the application deadline. We also expect you to have a clearly visible leadership potential that was also mentioned by Professor Bonn earlier. And you need to be a citizen of a non-European emerging or developing country. 
For those of you who are planning to apply um, as prospective leaders, um, in addition to these general requirements, you should um, possess either um, a master's degree or a second university degree in the field of climate protection, or we expect you to have um, extensive work experience of at least four years also in the area of climate protection. And for postdoctoral candidates, um, we expect them to have um, a doctorate in climate protection, uh, which has been completed less than four years ago. Or um, if you're currently um, finishing your PhD, or you should, yes, you should have finished it by August 31st uh, of 2023. And you need to have um, scientific publications um, which have been peer reviewed um, according to international standards when applying for the fellowship. What are the benefits that, um, that I expecting you as a fellow for um, those applying as, as a prospective leader, um, they will receive a 12 month fellowship um, to conduct their project in Germany and the postdocs can apply for up to 24 month um, of fellowship. Um, the monthly fellowship amount um, for prospective leaders is between 2,000 and 2,500 euros, and for postdocs, it's 2,500 euros. In addition to um, this fellowship amount, um, you also will receive several further allowances, for example, if you are planning to come with your family to Germany, but also um, for your travel costs, you will receive um, support from the Humboldt Foundation. And we encourage you to take part in a two month intensive language course, which will take place um, in Germany. Apart from these monetary benefits, um, as Professor Bonn also um, told, told you, um, we offer different uh, courses and seminars. For example, a several week introductory seminar where you're going to travel through Germany and getting to know um, the German landscape in the field of climate protection. And you will also um, take part in training courses and will be invited to, the, to a final meeting at the Federal Ministry for the Environment. Now I would like to provide you some hints um, in case you are planning to apply for a fellowship. It's important to know that we only have one application deadline per year. The next application deadline is 1st of February 2023. And um, you should calculate with some extra time, which means that um, now would actually be a good um, starting point to prepare your documents because um, apart from thinking about um, a project that you would like to conduct in Germany, you also have to find a suitable host. That is what Professor Bonn mentioned and it's actually um, the biggest challenge for most of uh, the applicants. Um, we also offer some advice in finding hosts. Um, we have a website prepared on our Humboldt Foundation's website where you can find um, a list of potential host institutions, universities or research institutions, uh, which could be of interest for you. But we also offer, um, for example, a letter which can be used to contact um, hosts in Germany. And if you already have personal contacts in Germany, you should use them as well to get in touch with um, professors or um, lecturers in Germany. And in your home countries, you can also start by approaching um, German companies or organizations to help you find a host in Germany. That is uh, the next point is um, something that Professor Born mentioned. It's very important to write um, a personalized email and to explain why you really want to work with um, the potential host, why is uh, his or her research or his or her work so important to you. So it should be really um, um, suitable for, for your potential host and should be um, recognized why, why you chose him or her. Um, regarding the leadership potential, um, it's one of uh, the most important selection criteria for um, this fellowship program. 
Um, and therefore, you should describe carefully um, your leadership experience. We don't expect you to have leadership experience in a professional sector. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, we have uh, had candidates who worked as project leaders, but we also had um, candidates who had um, who gained leadership experience in voluntary activities. For example, they founded an uh, uh, NGO or climate initiative. Those um, who want to apply in the postdoctoral um, line should ensure that the key findings of the doctoral thesis um, are already published when they are applying. And you can always um, contact our advisory service at info at avh.de uh, um, to get in touch with us if you're insecure about your eligibility or about your profile, whether your profile fits with the program. So uh, before the end of my um, talk, I would just give you a few more information about the application process. Um, I already said before, the next application deadline is on 1st of February 2023. Um, the application documents will then be assessed by our selection committee members like Professor Bonn and um, also by external peer reviewers. We will then conduct a pre-selection of the best 40, up to 40 candidates in June 2023. And um, the pre-selected candidates will then be invited to our hybrid selection meeting in September. The candidates will participate online and will have to present their projects and um, also take part in an interview session. Um, a few last advices for um, the host question. Who can be your host? Um, your host can be any person working for a public or private institution in Germany. And he or she must work in the field um, related to your project. Um, his or her tasks are to support you during your fellowship and also to provide you an appropriate workplace. He or she has to write a binding commitment and a letter of recommendation, which have to be submitted along with your application. We will now pass over the word to Professor Bonn, who will report about her experience as host for International Climate Protection Fellows, as well as uh, a former selection member of our uh, selection committee. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I think my task is sort of to see how it has been really, really um, Fantastic to work with the two fellows. There were uh, our, we had one fellow uh, from Mexico and one from uh, Kenya working with us, and has been a lot of fun. And I think that's why it's it's a give and take. And what they did, and I would like to show, uh, so share with you, so what makes it fun and what makes it also a nice experience, is that obviously we as hosts want to give you the experience to grow and to develop scientifically, but also as a young leader. I think this um, uh, uh, this fellowship is really for people who want to then also aspire to for leadership, both in science, but also politics or practice. So this is different to the usual research um, grants where um, it's really about you. And that is also something which you should obviously then also see that you can portray this in your application. Um, if you are, but when you start now, if you're looking for a host, it will be really good to think carefully, what do I want to do? Because then it's going to be a really good experience. And then, the, so there are several uh, considerations which you might have. You could say, okay, I want to do this kind of research uh, and therefore I'm looking for a certain host. You could also go the other way around and say, well, this institute really interests me but it doesn't work then to write just an email and say, oh, by the way, I always wanted to work at Helmut Center, or I think you're brilliant and here's my CV, then you won't get an answer, or not much at least. Uh, it will be really good to do some homework and to think about, okay, well, how could I fit in this particular lab? Because if hosts really want to work with you, they want to see also how you fit and whether you have a similar research questions and whether there's going to be an interesting exchange and how you can contribute to this. So I would always, when you contact somebody, I would always send your CV 
um, and also your research interests. And I would personalize the email so that you say, well, I'm very interested in this uh, um, in and working with you because of your research or what you're doing. I would like to work in the same area um, and please find and then I would attach. You don't need to have a big research proposal. You can also have some ideas what you would like to do, but show that you are independent and that you are, have an idea that you really want to take leadership. It doesn't need to be the full proposal, but maybe a page where you say, I would like to work on this and this and this, and I know what I'm doing. Uh, I also bring some skills, but some things I would like to also learn in your lab. So you don't need to do, uh, you know, don't need to obviously build, you're going for a lab because you also want to learn. But the more you anchor it with a host, you, the more you will be successful. Uh, in general, I think in Germany, we expect fellows to actually work a lot independently so this will be your project and obviously you're going to interact with the lab but it's not that there is most likely there's not a recipe which comes from the host who then says well i would like you to do this and this and that but really i think the fellowship is really something where you have a good idea and where you then say okay i would like to work with these specialists or i would like to work in this lab in general i would always um if then the host responds and says, yeah, this would be interesting. I would always do a Skype call so that you can then see, okay, does it fit? Also from your side, because it could be that you say, hmm, actually, maybe not. So, um, because then you, uh, I think this, in a Skype call, you, you will find out. And that's why uh, I would just see that you, that you really know, well, this is a year I want to spend, this year is for you. And uh, to make it worthwhile, it should be beneficial both for you as well as for the host. And this is best if it fits really well. I think the hosts also really have an interest to support you. And um, so when you are in Germany, so if you are successful, I think there are also, you can see, so what does the organization offer? Are there maybe also other groups or departments which might be interesting? Do they have, for example, other courses which I could, I, I could attend as well in order to learn that, some skills? Um, and in general, how is the group? So I think you should be able to find out a lot through the website. Um, and I think that would be something. Obviously, you could also then, if you write to potential hosts, you can also say, I would like to discuss this. And this is, for example, some research ideas. But in general, for example, I'm interested in urban ecology and climate change, something like this, yeah, or I'm interested in water risk and water risk management and climate change. And if you have other projects, I would also be interested in hearing about this so that you say, because the host may say, oh, yeah, great, there is somebody actually, let's say from Jordania, we have already a project there, it would be really nice if they wanted to work there. So that you then keep the door open, but I often get emails. I get a lot of these emails, so I get at least one a week and I cannot respond to all of this. So where people then say, uh, hello, Mrs. Bond, do you want to be my host? You have to sign here. And then maybe there's a CV attached, but I don't know what they want to do. And then it's on me. I have to then say, okay, what do you want to do? Can you send this? And if I'm busy, I, I won't be able to do this. So there is some way you can help yourself to be successful by, and, and it doesn't need to be a long email. So don't, but that you just say, I'm interested in your lab because two sentences, I have experience in this and this. And I would like to apply for the Alexander von Humboldt uh, Stiftung, so uh, Foundation Climate Change Fellowship. And here attached, you can also find some research ideas I have. And I'd be very interested if you were interested, uh, but I, I would also be interested in your ideas if the host has something. So I think this is maybe some advice I can give because it can be so brilliant to work together uh, and you can make it happen that there can be a really good collaboration. I've also had from other programs some, uh, and we, I'm still in touch with the uh, fellows. We have published afterwards um, nice papers. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, one of the fellows actually went on to do a PhD. Um, 
And so this is Betty Rono, actually. She is, I think she was on the Twitter uh, clip. And I think she's just, she just took the opportunity. And I think that's really great. So maybe something else. So while she was in Germany, she connected also with other, so I, first of all, there is a great program from uh, Alexander von Humboldt, where they take you to different, to see different organizations. And I think that's a really great benefit. Um, but Betty also engaged in conferences, so did Volke, uh, and took it, took the opportunity she had in, in Germany also to make contacts, also to make contacts to the uh, embassy of her own country. So, um, and then to say, well, I'm bringing this and to connect to this. Um, I'm still writing recommendations for them. Uh, and so I have, I have, I just have to say it was very fruitful and very engaging to work with both. Um, yeah, but in, at the same time, they came with an idea, they contacted me and they did most of the applications, but it's also really good to start early with the applications because the host usually can give you some really good input here as well of what is required. And I'm sure uh, uh, Mrs. Hoffman Pater will uh, give you some more information on this, but especially on the science context, there your host can help you and you can ask them. So you don't need to do, uh, do this all by yourself because now I'm coming sort of to my role as a, in the selection committee. Sometimes it's not really clear what people want to do because you don't have much space and it's, it's very short. But the clearer you can be, you can say this then, because what you do as a reviewer, you say, well, is the person, do they have a good track record? Have they already shown some leadership? Are they interesting? But then do they have an interesting project? And also, can this project actually be realized? Or is this something which is more like a PhD and wouldn't fit into, okay, so there are postdocs and there are the other fellowships, so which I want just one year. You just have to see, can I actually manage this in the time being? Do I, do I already have data in order to synthesize this? How am I going to do this from Germany? And so the more you talk with your host and discuss it, the better your research proposal will be. But of course you will write your research proposal because it's about you and, it's, and this is what I like about Alexander von Humboldt, it's that it's really about the person. Yeah, that's from me. Thank you very much, Professor Bonn. That was very encouraging, and uh, you gave a lot of good, uh, a lot of good advices for our candidates or for our interested um, people here. Um, I don't know. Do you still have one or two minutes, or do you have to leave? Yeah, I have a few minutes, and then I have to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there um, an urgent question for Professor Bonn? Maybe. Yeah, that's uh, one person raising her hand. One second. Beatrice, can you? Yes, please. Hi. Uh, thank you, Professor, uh, Professor Bon, for your explanation. And uh, in your last, actually, uh, phrase, I would like to ask you, what do you mean by is all about you, Alexander Humboldt program? Sorry, can you just repeat? I didn't get this acoustically. Yeah, because you said that uh, the program from Alexander Humboldt is all about you. What do you mean by this? So, like by the person yeah yeah so, so it's about you whether you have leadership potential yeah. so both in science but also maybe in policy and practice so it could also be that uh, you say well my dream is actually afterwards i want to work for the environment agency uh, or i am pursuing a conservation project or i want to be a climate change leader in policy so this is something you don't necessarily need to have a only a research track. Obviously, this is a research program, but this is something where you can be very applied. Um, but therefore, there is a section in the application uh, about leadership potential. And I'm sure um, Anke will tell you more about this then. Yeah. And, and that's why, but make this happen for you. So it's not in order to do some research for the host. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We also have a question in the chat, which is more like for the program management, I think I will answer that later on, maybe. Um, I will see uh, there was one question from Judith, I think, and another one. Maybe just uh, for the uh, chat. So if you do want to do a PhD, maybe you just start with a one year project, which is not a PhD. And you could maybe also use this opportunity then in Germany, there are also other uh, funds 
where you can then say, I want to work towards a PhD and maybe apply afterwards. So this can also be a strategy. I mean, I wouldn't say this project obviously needs to stand by itself. So it can't just be, um, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Judith, do you have a question for Professor Bon? Yeah, 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 I have a question. Good afternoon, can I go ahead? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Prof. Um, Judith, I'm um, listening in from Nigeria. Uh, I, I, I heard you say that um, the fellowship is for sciences. Can't uh, people from social sciences background be considered because there are some intersections um, of course. in social sciences and the climate change? I'm actually looking at for postdoctoral fellowship. And I was thinking that this could be a very good opportunity to try out things on aging and intersection with um, climate change. Definitely. So I wouldn't Definitely. Would so social, so I'm sorry right. that uh, sometimes in English, so it's natural and social science is any kind of science. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I, think, okay. I, I would really encourage you to go for this, make it very clear. So just remember that in the review committee, there will be people from all different disciplines. So make it very clear what you want to have as a deliverable afterwards, especially for a postdoc. Just make it very clear. I want to write a paper on this, this, and that, oh, or whatever. Yes, so make it very yes, clear. So because okay. you don't have much space. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And then again, quickly, ma'am, I mm -hmm. also want to know: Are there some specific um, universities that we are to seek a uh, faculty from, or as many schools as possible? Uh, well, I wouldn't do a scattergun approach because this is, first of all, um, I would just see, do some research and maybe Anka can tell you more about this. You can also even go to a, a, an NGO. For example, somebody went to Climate Kick uh, this year um, and, but see that you get, so get a feel that you get good supervision and see what is good for you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I think. Uh, thank you very much. I think um, Professor Bon has to leave us now. Yeah, because just one she... more question then from Desiree, and then I have to. Ah. Go okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Desiree. Yes. Yeah. I. You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Please. Desiree, we can hear yeah. you. We can't hear you actually, but I can see that your microphone is on. Ah, okay, no, please. So uh, there is uh, just a minute. So the Misanur, you said if I apply for can postdoc and the problem is based in developing country. Yes, of course, it doesn't need to be based in Germany. You just have to see where do I get the data from because you will be based in Germany. So either you have done field work beforehand and can use this or, uh, but the main thing is you are going to stay in Germany. So, but I, I think I can do some more. So Desiree, can you talk now? Otherwise, I unfortunately- need Yes, to... can, can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, um, I'm talking from Benin. Thank you very much for giving us opportunity to talk to you. Uh, so my question is about, is, is it possible to, to choose like a study area of uh, a kind of project anywhere or is supposed to be in European space or a, I don't know. No, for example, like, uh, actually, it might actually be really good if you know the area very well. So uh, yeah. Volker, who worked with me, worked on conservation and climate change in Mexico. And uh, Betty worked on a climate change problem in Kenya, and she and they both came actually with data which they had and which they needed help to analyze. So the problem okay. is most likely go, so it, it does not need to be in Europe, and very often it is not in Europe. So yeah. okay, so uh, maybe uh, if the the person that want to apply already did something and have some data, but they are not so much to. To, to be published and for example in my case i need uh, a bit support to to have more data in order to publish my work and something like that is, is, is that possible uh i think yeah uh, so the main thing is you're writing the application now and the yes. fellowship will only start in a year's time 
so we'll only start in 2024 so you have one more year to actually get some data but you i think the fellowship doesn't allow you to travel then back and, and get some data i'm sure anka can say some more about this uh, i'm sorry i would love to stay with you because it's really great to meet you uh, really nice to see this global community and i wish you all yeah i, I wish you all go for it and there are also uh, don't be disheartened if it doesn't work for the first time go for it again i also i myself also worked abroad for um for several times and it's something really worthwhile um, yeah okay but with this i think i have to say goodbye uh thank you uncle for inviting me thank you very much for your talk and uh it was really great to have you here and um to those who still have questions don't worry later on we have time to answer all your questions so goodbye okay bye -bye. yeah thank you for your attention and we know would like to um continue with uh giovanni mascarenas who is a fellow of the international climate protection fellowship program and uh, who will report a bit about his experience uh, thank you very much. Thank, uh, thanks uh, once again for everyone for being here. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, first of all, I would say that I wish I would have been in a meeting like this before applying. Uh, this is very helpful and really try to gain as much insight and pose as many questions as you can as if anything is not clear enough, because that's very helpful. Um, the, the application process has only two phases the first phase is where they will select 40 candidates up to 40 candidates and then the second and then the second phase which is actually the interview you're going to present your project you're going to discuss about it but uh, i know that the most difficult part of the project for most applicants is not there it's not one of those two phases it's just finding a host finding a suitable host it is very difficult and it was for me the most difficult part of it. Um, I would first of all recommend everyone to go to the Alexander von Humboldt website and check it, uh, check every information they have there. There's a list of possible hosts and uh, what I did, what actually helped me a lot was going through the uh, portraits of fellows. They have portraits of every fellow of the International Climate Protection Fellowship since its beginning. I went through it all using some uh, keywords. Once again, as I'm a lawyer, I work with law. I just would search for the word law or something like that. And there I would check if any past fellows who were working with something uh, remotely regarding what I wanted to, to work with. And from there, I would start looking for a suitable host. So. I believe that finding a good host, someone who has already hosted, maybe someone who has already hosted someone else in this program could really enhance your chances to getting a fellowship. Uh, someone who has already experience of what the Humboldt Foundation is about, what the Humboldt Foundation is looking for in a candidate. So that's what I did. And uh, that's how I found my, my current host. I uh, got in contact not only once again, I'm here at the IASS in Potsdam, but I got in contact with a few other hosts, and I did exactly that, what uh, Professor Bunn told us. Not only did I check the foundations or the institutes or the university's website and the professor's website to whoever would be my host, but I would also research their names on uh, Google Scholar, check their publications, check something uh, what they have been publishing in the last few years to check if what I wanted to do would actually uh, be suitable for their research, for their current research. And from there, you have already a, a start of a conversation also. Um, in the beginning, I was honestly lost. I didn't, I had no idea of how to find a host. I was just uh, trying to check the authors I was reading already, whoever was German or working in a German institution, which wasn't really helpful. And I would, I already had the idea of the research I wanted to do. I was already working on research, so I already knew what I wanted to propose. So in the first few emails I wrote, I would put a lot of information, not only information about why that host is good for me, but also 
the whole idea behind what I want to work with, how this could be done. Uh, and that's not the way to go. I'm just telling you, uh, do not list, because if you write an email that is too long, they're probably not going to have the time to go over your email. And that's unfortunate. So try to be, to go to the, straight to the point and show not only that you're capable, what you're capable of, that you have content, that you can do whatever you're, it is that you're proposing to do, and also that you know what you're talking about, why you're talking to your uh, proposed host, why you're talking to them. Um, yeah, and maybe still in this part of finding a host, I would recommend you, if you haven't started doing it yet, to do it as soon as possible, because we're in mid-November, uh, the holidays are coming in, and it's probably going to be harder to get an answer during the, the holidays. And not only that, the institution I'm, I'm at right now and a lot of other institutions, they also have the internal bureaucracy. They have a lot of applicants. There are a lot of people wanting to get an uh, ICP fellowship, and they have a selection, an internal selection of who they would be supporting for getting the Humboldt Prote uh, Climate Protection Fellowship. So try doing it uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure what I was, uh, what, how could I help you? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that, yes, the, the, the fellowship, it's all about you and your work and your research. So you're going to have the time and you're going to have the support to work on your proposed research. Uh, but the way you're going to do it, it really changes. It varies from institution from institution and institution. So I have a lot of uh, fellows, my fellows, people who came in with the same cohort. Uh, everyone has a different, slightly different from the other ones. But the common thing is, you have actually the full support to work on your research, but what you're gonna do with your time, how well you're gonna develop your research and what else you're gonna do during your time here, that's up to you. You are the one who are gonna make your fellowship, your time here in Germany worthwhile. Not only working on a computer or whatever you're doing uh, for your research, but also working besides that, getting to know people, going to conferences, going to lectures, learning more, not only on your field, but learning everything you can about climate protection and actually uh, getting everything you can from that experience to be able to, once again, this fellowship is for prospective leaders, to be the leader you can be. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, <laughs> I think that's it. That's what I had to say. Uh, if there are any questions, anything I can help you with, or maybe Anke, if I haven't said it, something you'd like me to address, please just let me know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Giovanni. I think that was also very helpful from your perspective uh, to share your ideas and your experience uh, regarding finding a host and what is important about um, the fellowship and the application process. So I think um, we are starting now with our question round and um, you can also add um, to our answers, Giovanni, if we forget something. So I, I've seen a lot of Hands. I think first there is Beatrice. For one second, I will unmute you. Oh, so first of all, I would like to yeah to thanks again for the organizers and also for Giovanni for the tips that you gave to us. They are really helpful. And actually, my question is not so much uh, focus on what Giovanni said is related, but not only. I think maybe the other uh, responsibles for the Humboldt Foundation could help me. Uh, so um, because now I'm doing my PhD and I want to apply for these postdoc positions from the Humboldt Foundation. And there are other calls that they say 
uh, that your project shouldn't be so uh, or yeah so equal like what the research that you have been conducting during your PhD or so I would like to know more about the position of Humboldt should I con like is advisable to continue my research from the PhD or to change for a more I don't know other project and to show I don't know this scientific leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you mean um, our Humboldt Research Fellowship Program and not this um, International Climate Fellowship Program? Online? Yeah, there is the modality for postdoctoral. Mm -hmm. post ah, okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so it's true that um, for the postdocs, um, it's usually expected that they don't continue exactly in the same um, research area or research um, field that I have done before. I mean, it can be related to it, but it should involve uh, new ideas, or, um, new um, methodology. So that is something that is also um, being um, assessed by the external uh, expert reviewers. So uh, one question, for example, is um, how do you assess the potential of the candidate and there um, the peer reviewers are also asked to assess how you're going to um, evolve with your project or with your um, research fellowship. And so that, that is actually important that you don't continue in the same way, but um, it should still be um, understandable why you're choosing this um, new project. So did I answer your question? Okay, so I continue um, with uh, Sarah Fuat. Hello, Sarah. Oh, we can't hear you. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Uh, Can you try again to unmute you? Okay. Still, we can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you like uh, to write your question in the chat? Okay. I did that, but it doesn't. Okay, maybe you can write your question in the chat, and um, then I ask. Meanwhile, uh, May Ayetiri. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity, and uh, thank you, Giovanni, for uh, giving us um, kind of uh, your experience. Uh, my question uh, to you is that um, how how is the the, the mo mobility? No, uh, you you were in uh, Germany. Do you have to be there the whole time? How does the field work? And uh, did, were you able to experience some? Uh, um, of the kind of uh, stay in other institution outside of Germany. Uh, so can you tell us more about that? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kaiba, would you like to take this question? So, um, yes, okay, your question was uh, about uh, field work, is that uh, true? Um, field, field work in general, uh, yes, it should be rather uh, done prior to uh, the fellowship. Uh, no, um, during the fellowship, um, you kind of have to be in Germany. And how long, like, is there like uh, restrictions? Like how, how long do you have to be in, like stay in the institution in Germany? And, and or like, like in case if you want to do field work outside of Germany, mm -hmm. uh, how, like how flexible it is? Um, is there like, you should, you, that's a kind of like a um, restrictions, no? Or, mm -hmm. or kind of, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, yes, in general, you have to stay uh, in Germany during the research fellowship uh, pe uh, period, but, but it's also possible to apply for Euro Europe um, for a short uh, um, stay in Europe for Europe uh, re research uh, stay. Mm -hmm. That's possible after you have been awarded a fellowship. Okay, okay, so thank you. If Thank I, uh, oh, yeah. Giovanni, please. If I can also maybe add something to it. Um, yes, you're supposed to be in your uh, host institution in Berlin, not in Berlin, in Germany during your fellowship time, but there is a possibility of having a Europe stay, research stay, uh, according to, I think that's also applicable for next year, right, uh, Anke? Yeah. You, but, mm -hmm. uh, that would be only for you to develop part of your research in another European country for up to two months, I believe. And uh, if you actually need to do that for doing field work in another country here in the European Union, I believe that that would be possible. It's possible to conduct field work here, uh, but it, that's the thing, it has to be here or in another European country uh, and something that you can do in the league, uh, in the time frame you have for your research. Uh, I have a colleague, a fellow who's doing field work in, the, in a river basin here in Germany. I don't remember specifically which river, but they're doing field work. And I also have another colleague who are, who are uh, applying for the Europe stay, but the thing with the Europe stay is that time here flies by. You don't, you start working on your research and you have to find another host in another country to do that. I actually try to do it, uh, to do that, but the only time I would have would be during summer. And I was talking to a university in France and they would be closed for summer. So <laughs> that wasn't possible, but yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. Okay, so um, Saba Nisam, please. Yeah, thank you very much for giving the opportunity. So my question is how flexible is the joining after this selection? If someone is getting a good selection, then how long, after how many time we can join? If he if he is already uh, somewhere in the fellowship and and he need to complete it. Okay, um, I understood that um, you're asking when um, the fellows have to start the fellowship after the selection. <laughs> Yes, yeah. um, it's a good question because um, it's a bit different from our other programs. The selection is in September and then we expect the fellows to start um, with their German course in January uh, of the next year. And in March um, with their um, research fellowship. So if they don't choose to take part in a, in a German language course, then they will mm -hmm. start directly in March. So it's six months after the selection. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so I see a lot of questions in the chat. Some may already be answered. Um, one question, I guess, was from a host, and it was about how to find um, fellows or if um, it's possible to get in contact with potential fellows if I understood right. Um, okay, what we um, if there are other potential hosts um, among the participants, we would like to tell you that um, after our meeting you can write a, an email to us if you are interested in um, being contacted by potential um, candidates. And we will then offer to, um, to post your um, website on our um, ICP website, on the website of our program. If that's helpful for you. Okay, is there another question? Um, so I only see one hand, but I th think that question we had already. Um, I just 
take it. I think there was one question whether it's possible to find a German host in other countries of Europe. Um, one thing is important, the um, fellowship has to be conducted in Germany. And as Giovanni pointed out, you can um, take part in a European research stay for a maximum of two months. That means you could go to another European country for two months during your fellowship, but you can't um, do your complete fellowship in another country than Germany. Okay, so, okay, there's one more question from Vinat. Okay, thanks for the opportunity. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So, uh, in my understanding, uh, we can define or we can have a contact with the host, and the host is uh, the requirement is at least uh, he or she is in Germany, either a professor or maybe from private company as well. But is there any, uh, let's say, any preference from the, maybe from the Stiftung, uh, which institution or uh, which kind of uh, profession or professor could be best suited? for me, for example, or I can choose by myself. And then uh, in my understanding also that there is a kind of selection to, to the host as well, if I understood correctly, is that correct? And thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can uh, start answering and then maybe Giovanni can also um, add to my answer. Um, yeah, for us, it's not important whom you're choosing as your host. Um, but one question for the host is also um, to assess your project and to um, also explain why he is suitable or she is suitable for your project. And also you are asked to do so in your um, application documents. So it should be clear why uh, you think uh, this expert is the right person um, to work with. And that is also going uh, to be assessed by the selection committee, but it's not, we don't have a list of um, people that we are expecting you to, to choose from, for example. I don't know, Giovanni, maybe you can, um, also add something from your own experience, um, if you like. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe uh, regarding this question for my, from my own experience, uh, I told you I had some kind of trouble. It was difficult for me finding a host. And when I was in this lost situation, not knowing exactly what I should do to find a host, I tried talking to my supervisor in Brazil, if he knew anyone in, working in Germany, and he got me a contact of someone working in a university here in Germany, also a lawyer, but not exactly what I was looking for, but okay, I sent him an email and he actually answered me and he told me, that sounds nice, pretty much that sounds nice, but I'm aware of how uh, demanding the Humboldt Foundation is. And I believe that your chances would be better if you find a better host. I could host you, but I believe that your chances would be better if you find a better host than myself. Um, I, I don't know if the Humboldt Foundation actually has something specific or how you can become a host or not, but it is good for you that what I did, what I said was, it, it would be good for you to look for people, for hosts who have already been hosts for former fellows in host institutions who already have experience with the Humboldt Foundation, not only uh, with the ICP program, but the Humboldt Foundation has a lot of other programs as well. Uh, but I know that for a fact that that's also not mandatory because I have colleagues in my cohort who are hosted by institutions that are first timers here in uh, uh, with the humble pro programs, but I believe that finding a good host 
someone who has experience, who has done meaningful work in your uh, area of research, this could be good for you. Thank you very much for adding this. Um, there's one question in the chat. Um, it says, if we get accepted, what sort of output do we need to give? Do we need to have published a paper as a project output? Um, no, we don't um, give or we don't um, set any stipulations for that. I mean, um, we have one question in the um, application documents where you have to tell us how you're going to communicate your results later on, because one idea of the program is also to share your results um, uh, with um, organizations or with people working in a similar area in your home country. So there you should describe what you're going to do after your um, your fellowship, for example, um, that you're going to share the results with um, some institutes or with um, yeah, some political institutes or with NGOs or something like that. But um, there's not any um, obligation or so to say that you have to publish anything from your um, from your fellowship. Okay, I see two more hands. Mesfin um, Mitiku, please. Okay, my, my name is Mesfin Mitiku uh, from Ethiopia. The, I just uh, conducted my master's degree in Germany previously. And uh, at this moment, uh, I'm just uh, trying to do my PhD here in Ethiopia at Salawa University. Uh, I, I'm just uh, conducting my PhD studies here privately and uh, want to have my uh, research work to be covered by uh, uh, donoring organizations. Uh, I just try to work with you, uh, Alexander Humboldt. Uh, best, uh, I just work with several organizations I lead, as a lead researcher in the area of climate and uh, water and irrigation, can I still be eligible for such type of applications? Because uh, as you can normally see, I am over 50 years of age. Uh, do you have an age limit that uh, can really fence me down uh, from the application <laughs> bracket? <laughs> I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for your question. We don't have an age limit. Um, what we have is um, this uh, limit regarding how long you have, how long it has been since you have completed your bachelor's degree, and there we have um, a limit of twelve years. I think uh, twelve years after you, um, or you, you have to apply. Um, uh, yeah, between your bachelor and bachelor's and the um, application deadline, um, the limit is twelve years. So to say, so when if you have completed your bachelor's more than twelve years ago, then you um, you are not eligible anymore to apply for the fellowship unless you have any periods like um, parental time or military service, something like that that we could take into account as well. Okay, I just uh, finished my master's degree probably uh, sixteen years ago. Um, okay. I have a written actually. I'll just. Uh... I was just in a different assignment, uh, probably, or I was just also hospitalized for uh, medical reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Is, um... What you can do is you can um, send your CV to um, our advisory service, this mm -hmm. info at um, abh.de. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also post it in the chat, and then we can, and then you should also write there um, you, the times that you could not continue your um, your research or your work and then we will check that for you thank you thank you thank you thank you you're welcome okay so there's still a lot of questions um i would say we still take maybe um five minutes before maybe you all have to leave um i will check whether i find uh, the questions um okay. So there's one question, is it okay to work with the same supervisor of our PhD as a host for the postdoc project? Um, it's possible, it's not, um, uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, we don't have a rule that it's not allowed to choose the same supervisor. Um, 
There's one question. Am I eligible to apply for a postdoc if I'm not working? I mean, not affiliated to any institution. Um, yes, it's possible. Um, it should be somehow um, obvious why, why you are not affiliated to an institution at this moment. Um, I mean, there can be good reasons why you, you're not uh, working right now. So um, you should post that in your CV as well so that we can take that into account. Okay. So I think for the moment, um, Okay, there's one more question I'm going to take. And maybe I should also, the question is from Sherali. Maybe I should also tell you that my colleagues are also answering your questions in the chat. And in case we forget a question, you can always write to us later on to, um, to the email address just posted by my colleague. And yes, please, Sherali. Hi, I'm from Tajikistan. I have one question concerning the uh, topic of research. Does the topic should have the regional character or does it uh, sh should have some, something like we should go with, uh, learn the experience of Germany or European Union or that we should solve some problems in our community? I mean, to which uh, will you give priority? I mean, the program will give priority to research topics. I think. Mm -hmm. um... It's not so easy to answer. Um, usually, um, what I just said about this communication strategy, this question targets on um, what you're going to do with the results when you return to your home country or home region. So, um, of course, there should somehow be a connection um, in your project um, to your home country or region. Um, but there are also a lot of projects that we see that are for example, doing a comparison between the situation in a fellow's home country and the European Union or Germany. So um, maybe Giovanni, do you have, can you add something from, from your um, project or from your colleagues maybe? I have to say I forgot the, the question. Ah, okay. It, it was whether it has to be, um, whether it's necessary that it has to okay. have a connection to your home country or whether it can also be a, about Europe or Germany. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I was also wondering that while I was working on my own uh, research proposal and once again, checking out the portrait of fellows really helped me with that because I could then see that there's a lot of fellows who are actually trying to build connections with their research, like in a specific local research and something regarding Germany. But there's also fellows, researchers who are working with something broader that doesn't specifically um, talk or say much about one specific location. For example, people working with batteries, lithium batteries and things like that. And there are people who are just working uh, developing research regarding their uh, their spaces, their uh, Brazil, uh, in my case, the Amazon. I'm working on uh, research regarding the Amazon here from Germany, and I'm not uh, forcing myself to develop some kind of links between the legal framework in Brazil regarding the Brazilian Amazon and the legal framework in Germany, because I don't think that this would actually be very helpful. So. I actually propose the research as it as it is, and I'm working on that because um, once again, it's an international climate protection fellowship. So it just has to prove that it can actually help protecting the climate somehow. Thank you. That was also important to add once again. Yeah, and there was one question um, my colleague told me that was asked. Uh, several times. Can the field work be conducted in non-European countries? Um, no, <laughs> it's not possible. Um, my colleague also um, said that um, earlier. 
um, you should have conducted the fieldwork either before you um, come to Germany or I don't know if many fellows do that, but it's also possible that um, colleagues in your home country send you um, um, data from um, for your project while you're conducting your um, your fellowship. That's also possible, but um, you can't uh, return to your home country doing the fellowship. Okay, I think I hope we have answered most of the questions. Um, my colleagues posted a lot of things and also our um, email address. So if you want to um, contact us later on, uh, feel free to do so. It was mm, very interesting for me and I really liked, uh, uh, really was happy that so many of you uh, had so many questions as well. So uh, thank you very much. And yeah, Giovanni also posted his email address, very kind of you. And yeah, so then maybe we see us next year <laughs> when you are applying for the fellowship. And um, also feel free to give us feedback for our event. Yeah, so thank you.